Hi everybody, so once you've got your Nitrado private server for Rust, and we're talking about PC in this particular video, although when Rust comes out for console, this probably will be very similar indeed. I'm recording this round about the beginning of June 2020. You'll you'll be itching to add mods or plugins as they um they tend to be called it in the Rust community. So where do you get them? How do they work? The place you get them is called umod.org. Now <laughs> What's changed a little bit um, is that the plugins or mods for Rust used to be called Oxide plugins, but they're changing like the platform um, that, that that Rust uses with the idea of having a plugin um, delivery service that can work with other games as well. So now it's called UMod. So when you go to plugins, or if you click on games, and then click on Rust. Um, and then you can click on plugins there, go around a bit of a big circle, and sort them by most downloads. You'll see what what plugins, UMod plugins, although they they are um, they are Oxide plugins that people like downloading. So, for example, Gather Manager is a very popular plugin for Rust, and basically it enables you to change how much resources you get when you go around the map. So, when you hit a tree with a rock, you get more wood out. When you hit a, uh, a rock with a rock you get more more rocks out that sort of thing and there's more stumps hanging around so it makes gathering um, resources a lot easier for the members of your server so that they can build faster and, and generally have a it's a quality of life improvement that way and there's loads of ones that you can look through you can read about and then and then potentially install so how do they work well the beauty with the rust umod system or the oxide system as it used to be is that it's very easy and when you go into a plugin, generally they'll have fairly straightforward instructions about how it works. That they don't go into super um, detail, step by step. But they they kind of assume you know a couple of things. So I'll tell you those those things now. So the first thing you want to do on your Nitrado Rust server is you want to make sure that you go to Settings General, and you want to make sure that you have Oxide ticked and then you want to save it and you want to restart the server that primes your nitrado private server to be ready for plugins be ready for mods it turns on basically oxide the modding system um, and then also i would recommend that you um, give yourself admin privileges on your server as well and what i'll do is in the description box below the video this video here i'll put a link to my video on how you can do those things because I also recommend you set yourself up um, with something like Rust Admin so you have an ability to Archon, to remote connect to your your server. The reason for that is, is the way that you change things on your server and change things in your moddings and plugs, that there's there's basically three different ways that you, that you can change the parameters for a particular mod. So if we take Gather Manager, for example, the way that you um, change things in Gather Manager is that as an admin, you log into the console. I think, you know, you just press, I think it's the, yeah, it's the, um, it's the F1 console, and you put in commands that, um, so gather.rate dispenser wood 10. So that, what that would then do is that would give you 10 times as much wood as, as you go around. So that way you're typing it into that console. Some of them, you would use Archon to connect to the uh, to get to your your server and connect that way. An example of that would be the whitelist mod. If you do that again, it does explain it in in the instructions how to do it, and you would co communicate with your server that way. And then the other way that you communicate with your server is by directly editing the files on your system. And so what happens is when you when you want to install a mod. You download it. Um, let's click download. They're fairly so that downloads a CS a .cs file, and it, it's so easy to do these compared to the Daisy ones. Then all you do is you go to your file browser, and you go to Rust, and you go to Oxide, and you go to Plugins. And you click on upload file 
and you would upload the gathermanager.cs file. Just click that, and that would I've already done it. And that would put it in there. And then often they recommend you restart your server. You don't always have to. But then if you go back to the Oxide folder, and then you go to the config folder, it's created a JSON file. And with some of the plugins, this is where you do the editing. So for example, with the time of day uh, plugin, stroke mod, you actually click that and you go into the, you can go into the uh, online text editor. And this is where you can change the length of the day. So for example, there you see I've said day length, 120 minutes, night length, five minutes. And that's where I change it there. You don't change it anywhere else. You change it by editing the actual text file, the actual JSON file that the plugin uh, and um, Oxide have created. So there we go. How simple is that? UMod, easy to get to, easy to find, easy to search. And again, I'll put the description to that video down below that shows you how to set up your server so it's ready to accept these mods and just have a good read of the instructions and also I would say if you're a little bit unsure about the instructions that are down here if you just do a Google search for install gather manager rust there'll be other files other lots of other articles that, that probably go through it in a more step-by-step -step manner to really guide you through the process. And I'll be doing some of those videos as well with some of the more common plugins or common modes for Rust on PC. Right, that's enough from me. If you've enjoyed the video, hit like. If you want to see more of the same, press subscribe. Thank you very much, and I'll see you again soon.